Uh, hi, I'm Spencer Nelson. I'm a sophomore majoring in, well, double, ma double majoring in history and philosophy at Stanford. Um, I'm going to say something fairly pessimistic. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so if there's one thing I drew from the survey, it's that ours, our generation is a fiercely opinionated one. And uh, the, the, the survey also shows that those opinions are our own as opposed to our parents. And millennials have been breaking with their forebears' religious views, and so too do they in their political views. So these opinions are, are extremely important for the social, political, and, uh, and moral development of the United States, and they seem to be very much still in development. Um, the generation gap that tore apart the nation in the 60s had a distinct direction. The new generation was, uni was, was unified by its opposition to the U Vietnam War. The zeitgeist of our own de generation is much more elusive. Uh, much of the generation's hope was pinned to Obama, his, and their visions for the future, however, were attached much to his person rather than to his ideology. And our fr our, we, we remain frustrated and we remain sharing, <laughs> excuse me, we still share some frustrations, but we remain largely disunited on matters of action and ideology. Over the course of the next decade, I would expect that the millennial generation will get more concrete goals and that to seek in political discourse, and greater consensus will emerge. And the process is immensely important to all invest in the country's future. Voters of tomorrow are forming their opinions today. The weight of this issue, however, lies in stark contrast to the means by which it will eventually be resolved. The sources from which the millennials are drawing their information and opinions on matters of politics and religion are not deserving of the place they receive. This is pretty funny. The millennials, uh, the millennials developing opinions largely find their grounding in their media. A plurality of millennials' primary online news source is Yahoo.com. On April 18th, Yahoo.com's front page had six celebrity or sports news articles, five articles on crime, and only two articles that could be considered of serious importance, one being more of a humane story about uh, Giffords. Um, and near the bottom, there was a small three-story section, uh, three story section about politics that, that didn't really live up to a very high standard. And if this small sample set is if any indication of the media young Americans are using to form their opinions and to set their values for, on, on, upon which they would be voting for the next couple of decades, we have reason to worry. Uh, with the decline of print media and the advent of a 24-hour editorializing and entertainment-based news cycle, millennials who are forming their opinions are left largely without recourse to serious intellectual substance. In this era, where, th where the younger generation's mind is very much still being made, the media will become a huge problem. The, the millennial generation is the first to face these problems, the first to face a word world without Walter Cronkite-esque broadcasting that was more new news reading than anything else, and without a print media that forms a strong part of our society. The making of such a generation's opinions while being faced with these problems will be markedly different from that of its predecessors. So the question lies to us is how can we expect a generation that uses these, consumes these forms of media which are of a low standard and even don't even represent uh, serious engagement with political discourse. How can we expect them to be, become uh, knowledgeable voters and knowledgeable members of society, and knowledgeable, or knowledgeable actors, rather? And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I I'm sorry for my pessimism. <laughs>